Hi everyone, welcome to AI Sales Insider. So today we are in the fourth episode of our podcast series and today we have a very special guest in our podcast. So we welcome Dishnira, uh, the founder of Tamil Island. So we welcome Dishnira to the show. Dishnira, welcome to the show. Thank you, Krishal. How have you been? Yeah, it's good. It's good. So uh, I think uh, you being in the show is actually very important for us because you are actually a very successful entrepreneur and uh, there, there, there can be a lot of things that we can learn from you and also there can be a lot of insights in the industry we can gain from you. So thank you for being in the show. And uh, so before we get into the uh, discussion, I would like to know uh, this year, like uh, what made you uh, decide that you want to get into the industry of fashion e-commerce? I'm asking that because it's a very competitive industry and it's not very easy to be uh, successful in this industry because the competition and the scope is very large. So what made you uh, decide? Very interesting, actually. I was telling you earlier, right? So to be honest, when I started Thambili Island, I didn't really think of it as, you know, uh, an e-commerce business or, you know, getting into fashion e-commerce. It was more to do with we wanted to, I noticed a lack for resort wear here in Sri Lanka and Sri Lanka being an island, like, you know, everybody would have thought, you know, you can get like kimonos and kaftans, but I think just everybody just wears shorts and shirts to the beach back then right so so we did like a survey i did a survey and uh, i found myself shopping online a lot but then online tends to be seasonal so and then i noticed this lack of resort wear here so that's kind of how it started and we started as a resort wear label now we have ventured into more everyday island style to like evening style so we've ranged now so we boutique on board place yeah so family turned six this year wow yeah so we to be honest i think probably for the first two years i don't think we were really i mean like we were just just a small business I and mean, it still is a small business but for the first two years we were like barely breaking even but then you know it is something that I was passionate about, so I learned the art of it. Um, at the start, I was the one doing all the patterns. So, so I don't have a fashion background. I studied finance. Yeah, that's so, what I was going to ask actually. Yeah. <laughs> how, how did it come from finance so, to fashion? So yes. I, I was working at Millennium IT as a business analyst, and then I and then I quit that job and started Family Island. So kind of went full on like head first into it I dove into it and learned a lot on along the way and it's been pretty interesting sounds amazing so I think uh, the progress that you have made like you know we can see like you know you're very uh, heavy the you know advertising and you know we see uh, your brand presence in but the you know, space we we advertise very little okay like I think I don't think people realize that like okay. we, yeah, I think it is more of a, like a word of mouth and then I think we're very prominent on Instagram. So actually we started on Instagram okay. and then kind of eventually into Facebook and then we got our website up. Okay. So, but, so we were one of those first Instagram brands here because nowadays I think you see a lot. Yeah. But yeah, back then, yeah. And I think, and I think now I think everybody understands the value of social media as well. Yes. Just back then, you have a lot of like household names that didn't really have a, I mean, have an online presence. True. Like six years ago. True. So I think the progress that you have made, we can see that you know, you, I think you are internationally also you are yes. providing. Uh, your we services. ship internationally. What so are the countries? So we currently we ship anywhere in the world. Okay. Currently, we usually get orders from Australia, Singapore. Mauritius, the wow. UK, US. We ship anywhere, Qatar, Doha, you name it. Yeah. That's pretty interesting. So, like, since we got into the space of like you know, your business, I kind of I'm, I'm curious to ask that you know uh, about your audience. Now, it's it's a very unique your audience. If I must say, like you know, you said it's island bear, so there's a specific niche that you target. So if you talk about your audience like characteristics wise, 
what kind of characteristics you might find in your audience like it would be interesting for us to know interesting what do you mean now, like i think i i like to think it's for everybody okay. i mean we live in an island here okay right so basically it's for we designed for everybody like it and for the typical i think and i think we designed for the sri lankan woman okay. i like to think that right cuz usually i'm very um we design styles that will be very flattering okay. on anybody so we and we also cater to a variety of sizes okay. so we have from uk 4 to uk 20 in the style so that's so so it's from extra extra small to 4x okay interesting so from those sizes i just want to know like you know, from those sizes if you take in sri lanka what are the sizes that you think more or less in the market like movie because i think in different think, markets yeah for us it's every really moves i think because to be honest when we started we were only doing from extra small to 2x and then we had requests for, from people to make a smaller size and also to do larger sizes so now we cater from extra extra small so so smaller than extra small as so, so okay xxs to 4xl okay so that's okay. a range of sizes range of now that's yeah i think I and that yeah. kind of captures a lot of audience other wise. sizes yeah interesting no i i asked that question was like you know i think in e- fashion e-commerce like you know the 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 sizes fits these thing these kind of things actually matters a lot right because now for example in sri lanka there are people who provide only for the excel market yeah. they provide so likewise there's a differentiator there so basically in your case you are mainly providing clothes to anyone everybody everybody so that's that's our target that's your for target for the sri lankan women great we designed for the sri lankan women and they they love it i mean i'm so excited whenever i'm in the store and if i see somebody like wearing a star i'm just like okay yeah it's on very and that's like the most fulfilling thing for me it's just seeing a customer wearing a star amazing so uh I think now since we have like understood where your uh, area is and what your focus is about so I kind of want to take this discussion into an area that is more like a buzzword these days mm-hmm. now I think if you take AI uh, so AI is actually like everywhere now and I everybody mean, wants to be a part, part of, of AI it, right what I want to know is now we all know chat gpt is not a buzzword anymore I think everyone knows it so like with chat gpt like we have seen lot of industries getting disrupted and i think if you take any industry somewhere in in that industry ai is used so my question is like how it is it is affecting fashion e-commerce the industry that you are in very interesting so actually at the moment we have sprout on our website so that's a ai sales agent so it's like a so before that i'll tell you pre i'll tell you how it was pre ai and now post okay right? so pre ai we had a we had a chatbot that connected to meta on our website but like the funny thing is i think it was just it was just to look nice because it was not really functional um Why I say that is because we don't have somebody usually seated 24/7 in front of a computer with Meta open, you know, waiting to like reply to messages, right? So you can you can schedule you can put some like FAQs in it, but other than that, if somebody asked a question, that was never getting replied to on time. Cuz okay. because what happens is we it comes in as a guest message to us and I mean I think you need to reply within a couple of seconds when somebody's chatting on a chat. So obviously we always see it later and uh, most of the time it's in the evening when everybody has like left work as well so there's nobody to reply I think so we just would see guest messages coming in and I think then they would go and try to contact us on like Instagram or somewhere because that way then we can reply to them yeah and uh, now we've had uh, we have sprout there's sprout on our website it's brilliant so 
it's so it's an AI sales, sales agent. agent. Yeah, so for us it, right now it also does like this AI chatbot kind of feature for us, and uh, instantly. So we just had to give a prompt, and it instantly replies. Brilliant! Like, and we see good conversions coming out of that because somebody, um, somebody had inquired about delivery to Australia, okay. and and then we got an order like that order had converted. Okay, that sounds interesting. Very interesting. So, so yeah, I think overall, what I understood from that is like, you know, in the e-commerce fashion, in e-commerce industry, like providing instant replies or responses very, and personalization is key. Yeah. So, and a lot of people usually message after office hours, right? Okay. But the funny thing is, we have people working during office hours, right? Exactly. So it's always after office hours that somebody goes on social media and then you know wants to inquire yeah. about a product and if they're inquiring about that product that shows that's a higher interest right yes. they are already interested in the product they just want to know the price they want to they want help figuring out their size okay so basically like how ai has disrupted fashion e-commerce up to a certain level from your experience what you're saying is they are more eager to get instant responses and person like in a personalized yes. manner so and that, i think what I would really like to see one day is for Instagram messages to be replied on. Yeah. Okay. And um, I think we're going to get connected on WhatsApp as well. We haven't done that yet. So, so I think uh, connecting to WhatsApp would actually change the game in a yeah. different way. Because I think, I think a lot of people here prefer to message on WhatsApp. Yes, definitely. Right? Yeah. yeah. I think interesting. So it's an interesting use case. So kind of have an idea like, you know, now if you take AI sales agent or having using AI in, into your business, like some some might think that it's a bit of a daunting task, like you know, it's a complex task, like you know, to set it up, stuff like that. So now I think most of the business owners, like SME business owners, they are not very techy, like you know, they are very they're not no, into I technology. Think no, true. But I like to think I'm techy. But okay. <laughs> no, but I think what happens is if you're a small business owner, you're you're wearing multiple hats. Yes. Like you're not only just like the CEO, right? You're also the finance person. Then you're also the marketing. Person. You're also sales. You're also looking into you're looking into everything, right? So then I think what happens is your bandwidth is limited, and then you kind of tend to prioritize what's really urgent, right? Exactly. So. Uh, like I was telling you earlier, right? We when when I started Family, I was everything. I was our pattern maker. I was our like fabric sourcing person. Okay. I was our marketing person. And then you know, if I take a day off, then like you know, everything <laughs> kind of slows Would down. Would understand? Yeah, too. yeah. And uh, and then you tend to that's so then you tend to prioritize like you know what is really urgent to get up and running, and. Uh, that's where your band gets divided, right? So, uh, yeah. Uh, so, I think what you were the point that you b b brought here was, I think, excellent. So it, the point is that since, like you know, SME owners that, like you know, wearing multiple hats, like you know, setting up a solution on their own is kind of like hard for them. So, like if you, so your experience in bringing AI into your business. How was that experience of like was it a process that took months and months, or how how easy was it for you to set it up? Sprout was really easy to set up. Um, I think it took like half a day. I just I knew I knew what replies we wanted to okay. send as well. So we had to like update some prompts. Okay. Um, that was to kind of give um, Sprout some understanding of what our business is, and we also provide with some links. Okay. And um, brilliant. And I kind of tested the sandbox environment a little a couple of times over like the week that we set up. And now I think it's answering pretty on par. Like so, I said, better than I think even like one of our team members would have replied. And and it's instant, right? We saw a con we saw so many conversions coming out of it because um, most of the time, sometimes you know information that is freely available on the website, people sometimes ask about it just because they want to verify. So, so Sprout handles that really well, and uh, and amazing thing for us is this is a, like you know they're already on our website. 
in chat was not really responded to before so it's now nice to see that you know chat is being responded to and we are also able to customers also able to enter their name and like details in case sometimes if it's like an order inquiry we can always get back, back to, to them yeah get back in touch with them or if it's something that's product can't handle they will um, also like connect you to the relevant department usually for us that's to connect uh, that's to share our hotline details okay. yeah but i think now sprout can be connected on whatsapp right i'm ready to try that out yes. yeah yeah it will be very interesting i think i think in the fashion industry i think AI can be used in so many different ways it's just you to decide where you want to bring it bring in it yes. yeah when i was traveling when recently we saw where you can you can stand in front of like a screen and it will show you what that product looks like on you wow yeah I think even if the customer can do that from home, that's great. This is something that y'all can work on. <laughs> so, <laughs> so, in in terms of now, I mean, there are a lot of SaaS. I mean, I want to drive this discussion into a different avenue, okay? Just to get some insights from you. So, now there are a lot of SaaS solutions available in the market for anything that you know, yeah. starting from e-commerce to whatever you can definitely see. So, the challenge that we have identified these like you know people would acquire these solutions but then the support services is actually kind of hard to get through you have to go through the ticketing system that they have like yeah. so now i think since you set an up an email and two days later you get a response response so i think that is like not so ai <laughs> yeah. in, in yeah. that in that fact so in your experience with sprout how was it like how how easy was it for you or how hard was it for you Setup was really easy. Um, actually, getting it connected onto our website was really easy as well. Um, support side was good. I got some assistance, but it was pretty like it was pretty DIY. I was able to like figure that out. We didn't really need to contact somebody to, to... get support. Yes, but yeah, if there was support, pretty, you yeah. were able to yes. get it. That's interesting. Yeah, but if, on our own, we were able to set it up. It was very smooth. Okay. Interesting. And then we were able to also test in the sandbox environment so that we knew Sprout was doing better. And then I kind of went through and uh, saw that we can customize the colors and we went like really colors for the chats. Yeah, but I think the important thing is Sprout has been responding to those messages that would have otherwise um, like been missed. And also we're able to now uh, capture some information from our website visitors yes now, it's, it's amazing like now you mentioned a use case earlier that you know someone came to your website yeah. and asked about the delivery how long it would take to deliver, deliver to Australia, Australia and then that uh, we woke up the next day then place that order. Order. but yeah that's like if you really look at that use case it's a very simple thing you're asking like yeah. you know how long would it take yeah. to deliver yeah. so now the key thing that my my understanding from that is like sometimes we try to innovate things making to make make the users uh, thinking that user experience will be increased but what you have done is you have just put a ai sales agent in your website and that ai sales agent is just answering generic questions so I think if you look at it as a use case, twenty four seven support, right? Support, yeah. Because this message came in at like like super early in the morning for us. Nobody would have been there, there to exactly. reply to that. So, which means like pro having AI sales agents in businesses like fashion e commerce, it means you are always open. I mean, if you take the concept of website, having a website means you are always open for business. But if this kind of use case doesn't get answered, yeah. which means you are not open for business. So I think through <laughs> through that, I think it's a very interesting use case you brought here. This year, like sometimes I have, I have, I mean, people ask me like, you know, what kind of solutions you all can give. But if you look at in a very, I think, in very uh, simple sense. By providing generic solutions, by providing generic information, also can bring you a lot of value into your business, right? Yes, so much because, like I told you, it's information that is available, but it's just that sometimes people just need to validate mm -hmm. and verify. And I think when I think people like to ask a question and then they're answered that way, you know, they're like, okay, you know, I've got this information now. Exactly. Yeah, because like I told you, 
so like if you look at a lot of the messages we get on like instagram and facebook most of the time they'll send our product that has the price on it to us to verify the price but it's, uh, like they'll go to the website they'll take a screenshot and they'll share it with us again through direct message like people they check on the price and they actually want to get a human interaction that's what people like exactly right? and i think and i think sprout handles that beautifully which has been it's amazing good. to see yeah and it's nice um it's also nice to also see the conversations that people are having on the website you know it gives you a lot of Most learnings of time, also yeah, right for sure we know what people are looking for we know um whether we need to improve certain things okay interesting there's a lot of insights you can gather yes. through these activities yes so i think uh, overall it was amazing that what you shared like you know the insights and especially the use cases like you know one now we just want to get spread on all our websites that's pretty amazing so i think what has been really interesting for us with sprout is the fact that 24/7 messages are being responded like instantly and you ask a question and it instantly replies right for us we don't have we are not we are a small business so we don't have a customer support line for 24/7 right it won't work for you right? yes no and it doesn't make sense make right because you need to have about three people working shifts minimum exactly right and and it doesn't make sense for us and at the end of the day it's not a urgent business that we provide mm. right we are a fashion e-com we are a fashion brand that has an e-commerce presence Person. and we also have a shop so for us it's not so urgent that we need to have 24/7 um call uh, 24/7 call center so that's what sprout has been sprout is doing that for us at like a fraction of the cost and it's quite impressed and interested to see what else sprout will bring out right um so yeah interesting that so now ai is so fast fast exactly so, so that's the area i want to get into like now for example now i think from your experience ai sales agents actually works in in your business because it actually provides these information and through this information you get conversions mm-hmm. so that's yeah. the idea so anyway this industry is going to like change this stuff yeah i think ai is yeah. amazing everything that we've been seeing yes yeah. right? so ba- basically what i want to know is as a fashion e-commerce like you know as a person as a business woman like what kind of uh, things you would like to see in the ai sales uh, agent like ai sales so agent sprout you're yeah. asking me what i want to see through sprout sprout exactly okay, what i want to see so i've thought about this a lot right you know i mean we are all about automating as much as we can so i would really like to see at the moment i think what it does it, it replies to generic questions that people are asking for but if it can recommend particular products depending on so like work just like how our, like uh, like a sales assistant in our show would work, work right Provide because yeah conditions. exactly so if you can like so because and i think ai has that capacity right to understand so say i chat and i'm like hey i'm looking for a black dress for an evening outing i want you to recommend hey these are the top 3 products i think you would be very interested in now that's uh, that would be brilliant i think that's a, that that's going to be a game changer yeah i mean for yeah. e-commerce businesses like because you know otherwise you need to kind of go through all the menus on the website and try to figure out what everything is but then when there's like so many products now so like it's still in the in the in the uh, area of personalization right? of course i think that is what ai adds to, to your business right? exactly. it's personalized service and everybody wants personalized service so those are kind of like i think what, from what you said in, in in our discussion what we discuss it's about instant responses and personalization so so those two uh, motivators i mean those are the two motivators that would actually drive e-commerce with ai yeah. that's that's yeah. that and okay. i think like especially like a product like spar i don't think it's only for fashion right? i think it's for anybody that has a website you can exactly. plug it in and it will capture a lot of information that you would have missed if otherwise right because we have a facebook pixel on our website but 
Meta doesn't share any of that information with us. They capture that and you know they will encourage us to do a retargeting ad. Right? <laughs> but here we can see who visited our website in the sense if they had a chat with Sprout. Right? And we are able to and also we are able to see if we are able to um I mean the interesting thing is we can go through it and we can analyze and see if that chat was uh correctly like you know if they had answered sure. that correctly and then if we need to like intervene or whether we need to get in touch with the customer like that is captured and that is shared with us right interesting and customer doesn't have to go find a contact form somewhere to ask this question like whatever inquiries they have uh because if they want to get in touch with like a human agent right usually a website has a contact form right which is which a customer would go and fill and then like two days later you will get a response right but this is instant instant exactly. and you're already on the website so that means you're already interested in what we are selling true so i think what sprout is helped is just convert and we're seeing so many because any time because the nice thing is we can match a chat to our orders right exactly so i think it was a very insightful session i'm yeah. excited about the product yeah i was like so be excited to see how how it uh, would work for you yeah. and i think that recommendation engine part that you i think that's what you meant right yeah. by recommending that's what i want to see yeah. so i think it's it's kind of a novel idea and also i think as you mentioned ai has the cap, cap, capacity to yeah it has the capacity like. yeah so you should work so on it i think yes definitely so uh, i think uh, this year thank you very much for being in the show and uh, thank you for sharing your insight and your successful stories and i think uh, we all know how family is performing in the e-commerce uh, sector so i think uh, i'm sure you must be having a lot of plans for uh, family in the future and all the best with that and uh, all the best with your uh, with using sprout in your business and i think uh, there are a lot of things uh, as e-commerce how like you know if you take e-commerce there can, there there are a lot of areas i think ai can contribute to and i think uh, that's an area for us also we can see what so kind much. of yeah. things we can do i think it was great having you in the show thank you so, so much thank uh, you for having me krisha yes so uh, so uh, thank you for joining us today so we had a discussion with uh, dishnira saparmadu the founder of uh, tamili island so uh, in next episode we will bring something new in ai and also we will bring something that how ai sales agents uh, can change your business we will be talking about areas how ai ai sales agents are affecting businesses and affecting the way they do sales so stay tuned everyone we'll see you in the next episode thank you for joining